Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, I'm going to speed paint this little birdie on a bow while we talk about 2021 achievements and 2022 goals. So stick around. Right now, we are at the beginning of a new year, 2022. And the last two years have been kind of a doozy for a lot of people. <laughs> A little bit challenging, just a little bit, you know, nothing to see here really. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. Um, but I really wanted to think about not just what was really hard about the last two years or what was really sad about the last two years, but rather what achievements have I focused on and what am I proud of over the last year in particular. 2021 was last year at the time of recording this. So the first thing that I'm really proud of, and these are gonna be very wide ranging, they're not all gonna be art related, <laughs> they're gonna be personal, life related, and art related. But the first thing I'm really proud of is this was the first year that I really got back to the gym and consistently went every single week, at least three times a week, but most often five times a week. And the thing that got me there was Zumba. I don't know if any of you are into that, but I am a, an extroverted person <laughs> and I love to dance. And going to Zumba just made me feel like I was hanging out with my friends, kind of like in college when you're in a dorm and you just like are having fun with your girlfriends and you put on goofy music and dance around in your pajamas. That's what it feels like to me to go to Zumba class. <laughs> so we're all, you know, late 30s through early 70s ladies in that class, a couple of men thrown in, retired men mostly. Um, but it's just such a funny blast. You just shake your tushy and shake your tatas and go to town. <laughs> So I don't know if any of you are into that, but if you're extroverted and the idea of going to hang out with your friends as opposed to going to the gym to sort of just work out and get a sweat going, it kind of hides the fact that I'm working out from my own brain. So that's why I really like it. I tried the treadmill. I tried, you know, the bike. Those are great when you're into a really good book or something, but Zumba, I look forward to going to where I really don't look forward to any other kind of working out. So that was a huge achievement. The next thing about 2021 that I see as a huge achievement was really doing a good job of keeping in touch with my friends and family. So really regular phone calls. I even started up doing a Zoom meeting with my college friends who I hadn't seen in, you know, over a decade and really trying to make an effort to all get together and keep in touch because something about 2020 and 2021 really made me very aware that we only have so much time on this earth. And if we wanna keep in touch with people, we kinda have to put the effort in and, and make it part of your routine. It's not gonna just happen. And eventually you're thinking about calling people and you don't do it. You're thinking about keeping in touch with someone and sending that email and you don't do it. Eventually you're gonna feel like you shouldn't do it, like it's imposing or something. That's how I started to feel. So instead of doing that, I just reached out and said, let's do it, let's, let's get on the phone, let's get on a Zoom. And it was really well received and it was a ton of fun. The next 2021 achievement, as I would say, <laughs> I'd see it myself anyway. It's kind of weird to talk this way. <laughs> I'm so highly achieving, people. Look at me. That's how it feels. But I know it's supposed to be more to just share and get you thinking about your own achievements and start feeling positive. Kind of like a gratitude journal, but just in your own head. I'm very into that because our brains tend to focus on the negative. It's just how we're wired. And you kind of have to affirmatively force yourself to focus on the positive. And that's what I'm trying to do. But man, does it feel uh, weird <laughs> to be talking about myself this way. But finding my own art style is a huge achievement for 2021 for me. That was really the year that it solidified what subjects I'm really loving, what sort of approach to the artwork I'm really enjoying. And it means that I do more art and I just, I was already doing a ton of art, but I just look forward to it. It never feels like a chore. It never feels like work. I'm always just having fun and playing. Again, it's just like playtime, just like with the Zumba. It's just more fun, more play, love it. The next one is reducing my paid work hours. So my, my job, my normal job outside of obviously YouTube or creating art, my normal job my husband and I both reduced our hours at work this year. I mean, he really started last year, but I was able to really get it done this year. It took some time to ramp down because it was a really intense <laughs> situation. And it's still pretty intense, but being able to limit it a little bit is huge. To really have nights and weekends and be able to do other things, that's one of the reasons that my art did develop so much in the last year and a half, and that is one of the reasons I had time for my final big achievement of 2021 to round out the top five, this YouTube channel. I've been such a huge art YouTube fan for so long, and I've gotten so much out of other art YouTube channels. 
I decided I'd, you know what, it's time for me to pay it forward. I really want to share my art. I want to share what I've learned. I want to hopefully inspire other people the way that art YouTubers have inspired me. And that's what I've been trying to do. And I try to make videos that do that. And I get wonderful comments from you all that really just make my day. I save so many of your comments. <laughs> Again, the positivity, trying to create a positivity bias and read the positive comments and enjoy them and make my brain realize things are good. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm doing. And it's just awesome to see that there are comments like, I'm going to run into my studio and get my supplies or I'm going upstairs and getting my markers. I can't wait to do this too. It's really fun. So thank you so much for being you know, a huge part of my 2021 joy heading into my 2022 goals to keep that going. Obviously, I want to improve my video editing and video quality for 2022 and beyond. I'm trying to make every video higher quality than the last one. I'm always trying to improve. I got the microphone. I got the editing software. So I'm really trying to kind of get my sea legs with editing since it's not part of what you normally do with art. It's a separate skill. So just continue working on that skill set in 2022 is a huge goal. Let me just say, I talked a little bit about the positive comments. The art community, blessedly, is very largely positive. We, we really are lucky not to have a ton of trolls coming in trying to pick fights and make things negative. It's really a positive, wonderful place to be. And that's one of the reasons I was a YouTube art fan for so long and continue to be, obviously. So that's what my uh, first, I believe, 2022 goal. My second 2022 goal is to eat vegetables at every meal, kind of like the Zumba thing. That's part of my life now, so I feel like the exercise has gotten taken care of. Now I need to focus on the nutrition. There's a lot of debate and disputes about what to eat and what's good for you and what's not good for you, like keto, vegan, Mediterranean. I feel like people have studies for anything they want to do, and the one thing that's not really up for debate is that vegetables are good for you. So I at least want to get vegetables in at every single meal, even at breakfast. And I've been doing that so far, but it's only been like five minutes into 2022. So we'll see if I keep going. Um, my next goal for 2022 is to use up an entire watercolor palette. And I don't mean that I have to start one from scratch and use it up from scratch, but I mean, I have so many <laughs> stinking watercolor palettes going right now. This one here in this video is my Daniel Smith with three Winsor & Newton colors. The top left is the Winsor & Newton white gouache, and then I have Winsor & Newton manganese blue hue and Winsor & Newton opera pink in that palette. But that's the one that's probably the most used. So I'll probably focus on just trying to finish that one up. As you enjoy this satisfying tape peel, I'm gonna wrap up the final two more goals, both very similar art-based goals. In addition to using up the watercolor palette, I also wanna use up my Turner acryl gouache. So I'm gonna really focus on using it as much as I can. I'd like to just use it up and move it out of my studio because I've got the Blick matte acrylic. Now I've got Holbein matte uh, gouache, and basically matte acrylic, and I've got um, the Liquitex that I'm working on. So I just want to get some of these things used up and out of my studio. And the final one is to use up one fill of my Winsor & Newton mini airtight gouache palette. And I'm well on my way already, and I literally just got that <laughs> and just filled it. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, you probably did. So go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. That would be wonderful. Until next time, remember, create something cute.